Welcome to your 2025 London Air floor plan 4595. We're going to do a walk around here with you, starting with the generator slide. We'll come around here and show you how to open and close it. At your first compartment door back, you have your HWH generator slide extend and retract switch. So to extend the gen slide, just press and hold forward to open and retract is down. To operate your generator slide, your ignition key has to be on and then your switch will be enabled. And as we move into the slide, you can see that we have the ability to access headlight, turn signal components, windshield wiper, wash, and all of the other components here on the firewall. So we'll just kind of work our way over from this side towards the left. So what you'll see here is your street horns wiper wash fill. You want to keep this full. This is your hot water spigot. So you, your hot water spigot is where you attach so that you can get hot water uh, to wash on, on the outside. In addition to this uh, spigot, you'll notice there's a drain hose attached to it. This drain hose has an on-off valve here so you can drain that for winterizing. Then close it when you're done draining. This is your filter for your ITR Oasis. This needs to be changed annually. This is your Onan generator. Your generator runs on, on diesel fuel. Your generator will only operate if you have at least a quarter tank of diesel in your uh, tank. Uh, it doesn't operate below that. So to make sure that you're going to have power inside before you start it, you want to make sure that this breaker is turned on or in the up position. If it's tripped, it might be down about halfway. You'll have to reset it off and make sure it's all the way up is on. The stripe up and down is on, zero is off. To start it manually, you would just use this and you'll see the light come on and it will flash. Once you're done using it, you can turn it off manually here. This is the meter that tells you how many hours are on the generator. And to service it, you've got your access panel here to access your filter and for service. These are your air horns here. Just above your generator, you have your HVAC system for the cockpit heating and cooling. The amount of refrigerant charge is listed here on a tag in case you ever need to recharge your system with refrigerant. On the passenger side, just beside the generator, this is your HWH system. This is the HWH pump and all of the solenoids here that operate your jacks and your uh, fluid manifold indicator lights. This is the system that for any hydraulic operations in your coach, this is the heart of that system. There's a reservoir tank here, and you should check that fluid level by removing this cap on the back side. And it has a little mark. The jacks should be up and the slide outs in the out position to make sure that you have the upper level filled with fluid. After you check that and you're good, you can put that back. In the event that the, the generator slide might need to be opened manually or closed manually, you can do that by pushing these paddles in the, in the down position and then you can actually push the generator slide in manually. After that, you'd have to reach up and then 
open them again and that would lock it back into place. But that's just in case you had an issue where it wouldn't move. You can do it manually if you had to. You can make mirror adjustments here by loosening these Allen head screws and then you can rotate or tilt the mirror. You can also make adjustments to the whole arm back and forth by taking the cap off here and then loosening the nut and then make your adjustments and then you can retighten that. At the entrance door, uh, we have our door awning. A door awning is a Girard awning. Uh, the, the Girard awnings at your door and your patio awning all the way back, you have two more patio awnings here, can be controlled with your remote control. The channel selection would have to be made. When you scroll through your channels, you'll see you have one patio awning, two patio awnings, and your door awning. So if you wanna operate your door awning, turn it to channel three and hit out. There is an LED light switch that you can turn the lights on. It automatically stops. When you're ready to stow it, just press in. You can operate all three awnings at the same time if you go to channel zero. So if I press stop there and I want to extend all of the awnings at the same time, I just press out and we can turn our LED lights on the awnings as well. The main patio awnings are the same. They come out and they'll stop when they're fully extended. And if I just want to put one of the awnings in, I can do that. If I just go to my channels, let's say I wanted to put this awning in a little ways or there was something in the way and I couldn't run it out all the ways, I can just control this one, go in and stop. And again, if I want to just run them in all together, just go to channel zero and in. and they'll all go in at the same time. There is an adjustment for the amount that the awning extends or closes at the center of the two main patio awnings and the end of the motor. There's an adjustment tool in your coach that's plastic. If you look straight up at the motor ends, you'll see a red and a white adjustment screw and you can adjust there. In case of an emergency, we'll show you a special tool that you can use if you're on the roof in the center where the awnings come together. You'll put the tool in, it's shaped like an Allen wrench and you can turn that to manually retract the awnings. Your entrance door when it opens and closes, it has two locks here. The upper lock is for your deadbolt. The lower lock is for your door handle. So if we want to lock the door handle, we just press down and then our door handle is locked. If we want to operate our deadbolt from the inside, we just rotate this open and closed here. We can use the keys manually uh, to unlock the deadbolt and the door here, or we can use our key fob. To unlock the screen from the door, you can use your lever here, push down. And you can close the screen. There is an additional screen that's retractable on the screen door that you'll want to bring down here and it locks into place. So you want to secure that. You can also use this lever here, just push down and 
you close your screen door here. When the door closes, the magnets here send a signal for the steps to open and close. If you'd like to have the steps remain open so that it doesn't move every time you go in and out of the coach, there's a step override switch in the overhead and we'll show you that a little bit later. If you don't have your key fobs or your keys, that's okay. You can still lock and unlock your doors and your baggage compartments with your Trimark handle. The code that comes with your coach, when you get it to unlock your door and your baggage compartment is one, two, three, four, four, one. And you can hear it unlock. If you wanna unlock the baggage door compartments, it's one, two, three, four, four, two. And that unlocks both the door handle and the bag baggage compartment. There is a doorbell at the bottom. And if you're just wanting to exit the coach and lock everything, just press and hold the number one where the icon for the lock is. And that locks both your baggage and your door. When you get your coach new, you'll want to set up your own code to enter the coach. Just on the left-hand side of the steering column is a small switch that we'll show you in a little while when we go inside. When you depress that, this beeps, and then you can set your own five-digit entrance code twice, and then you'll be able to set up other codes for people to enter the coach, but that will be your master code. When you open and close your door, there are two latches that the door can go into. That's the first latch, and this is the second. So when we travel, we want to be in the second latch so we don't get any wind noise. But if we're just exiting the coach, and we don't want to make a loud slam with the door, we can just close it into the first latch. But if we're traveling, we want to close it into the second one and now it's flush. In addition to the manual open and closing of the patio awnings, which we'll show you the small rod for that, you have a longer one here with the crank handle that you can insert at the end of the door awning and you can manually open and close your door awning. So if we insert that, now we'll be able to open the awning or close. So in case you have a power failure um, or maybe a motor failure, you'll still be able <clears throat> you'll still be able to operate your awning. The lanyards uh, that allow you to discharge the moisture in your air system are right up here in the wheel well. And you can use this as another way to reach in and pull those lanyards to discharge your moisture. You don't wanna have moisture in your air ride system because that moisture can uh, cause issues. There are three lanyards in the wheel well, in the front, back towards the frame rail, one the one that you need to pull first is a silver color. The other ones are green and red. So to reach those, you could take this rod and go straight back in. And you'll hear when I grab a hold of that lanyard, the air releases and it helps remove the water that's in the system. Then I'd want to grab the other two and release the air out of that of those two. You'd want to release the water out of your system daily whenever you're operating the coach. So right behind our wheel we have our docking light, our marker light that comes on and off when we turn our uh, parking lights on, and our fuel fill door. Just open that, remove the cap, and you can fill your diesel tank 
from this side or the other side, it goes to the same tank. You can see we have our slide out open and on top of the slide out is an, uh, another awning that's called your slide topper awning. It's a fabric that keeps uh, debris and water off the top of your awning and that one opens automatically whenever you open and close your slide out but there is an awning above the window. The window awning can be open and closed in the front overhead. I'll demonstrate that. This door is the access for your outside entertainment center. Just lift it to open. You can see it's already playing a uh, Newmar video because we're at the dealer show. There is a sound bar here. So if you want the volume from the television to come through the Bose speaker, you can make that adjustment. Over on the side, there's a uh, switch that you can rotate either towards the TV or the radio. So in this case, we would choose the television and we would put uh, our speaker coming through with the TV or we can choose the radio. If we choose radio, we'll have to set the interior radio to house mode. There's uh, another 120 volt outlet there with USB charging ports. If you want to move the TV to a new location, just grab a hold of it and rotate. And when you're finished, stow it away. There's a magnet that holds it in place. So in our first compartment door, in the baggage doors, we have our basement freezer. The basement freezer operates on two modes, either 12 volt or 120 volt. Only the 12 volt is plugged in right now, but the 120 volt plug, just plug that in. Now the freezer will operate on either or. The tray pulls it out so you can open and put your food in on either side. You can use this basement freezer as a refrigerator or a freezer. Just set your temperature here uh, to the setting that you'd like. This is Bluetooth compatible. To pair that with your phone or smart device, you can get more information on that. Just scan the QR code that's inside the top lid. When you're done storing or adding or taking away, just close it. Our next compartment back is our Easy Glide tray. The switch to open and close it's here. Just hold it down, it'll fully extend, and it automatically stops when it's extended. Then you can release the switch. So in our next compartment back, we have another Easy Glide tray for storage. It operates the same as the one we just looked at, the smaller one. The interior lights come on automatically when you open the doors. In our next compartment back, we have our InterVac system and some accessories here. Let's open this tray. The, the InterVac can be operated out here with our accessories. We would want to insert our hose here. After we get that inserted, we put our attachments on 
and we can turn it on right at the handle or we can turn it on manually here. Just behind the inner vac, you'll notice a sink cylinder. This sink cylinder helps open and close your slide out room. There are two small solenoids on top and these small plastic paddles need to be extended this way straight out from the cylinder to be in the operation mode. If you ever need to retract your slide out manually, you would push these so that they're both in the same position for 90 degrees to the solenoid and then you can close your slide out manually if you use the tools that are provided with your coach. These are the manually operating rods that will screw into the slide and close your slide out. So that complete procedure uh, will be available to you on our website. Just beside our sink cylinder is our camera module and all of the cameras are labeled here for which plugs they're put into. This is our dual motor control for our other slide out. We have a Silverly module here for our tile control, the TM229, and our bedroom slide out control here. We have additional 120 volt outlets here. And down in our tray, of course, we looked at our awning rod for open and closing. We have an aux auxiliary air supply that you can plug into your front or rear coach supply for air. You'll need to air up your coach to have that air working. We have our InterVac accessory bag and we'll show you that inside how to connect that and we have additional floor tile in case you need to replace a tile inside this is the same lot number and color of your current floor this tray pulls out manually lift to unlock and pull to open if you look straight back you'll see your itr oasis and hose connections there. To close this compartment, just lift, unlock, and close. In our next compartment back, we have our pegboard. This is used for storage of any kind, tools, cleaners, whatever you like. We have our uh, marking light here, docking light. This is our lane sensor warning for your driver and passenger mirrors. In between the wheels, you'll see your HWH leveling jack. The leveling jack is currently down, but when you store it, you'll need to walk around the coach just before you travel and make sure that that jack or anything underneath the coach is fully retracted and clear. This small door is for your DEF and emergency air fill into the bags if you need to add air to travel. In this compartment, we have our chassis batteries. There are two chassis batteries to start your coach, and these chassis batteries power up your slide out. Your HWH slide out is linked with this mini breaker at the bottom, so that has to be turned on for your slide outs to work. This one needs to be turned on for your engines to start and your accessories in the cockpit. There is a small fuse at the top of these batteries for your solar panel charging. Underneath this wiring is a small compartment with chassis fuses. If you have uh, marker lights or things that are chassis related that aren't working, just turn this counterclockwise and on the inside back 
is labeled all of those fuses. Just re take the fuse out, check it if that appliance isn't working and change the fuse. There are additional or extra fuses inside here so you don't need to search for them. These filters are your air system filter and your fuel filter, fuel filter. This compartment is not sealed because of the batteries. It's not uh, supposed to be sealed because it needs air movement. This is another blind spot detection device. It's mounted at the rear. There's three of these and they all need to be clean and clear so that you can know if there's anything in your lane when you are making lane changes. Back at the rear cap, we have our reverse lights, brake lights, and our rear engine compartment. To access the rear engine compartment, there's a small lever at the bottom here. So you'd wanna have one hand here while you pull down that releases this and you can open looking inside starting at the right you have your engine coolant engine coolant level is full cold here and in the window you'll see it's red this is the type of fluid that you'll need to add but never remove this cap if the engine's been running because it'll be hot wait till the engine cools down before you add any uh, engine antifreeze. This is your auxiliary air. If you need to uh, connect the yellow hose that we showed earlier, make sure your engine's aired up. You can connect there, air up your tires or other inflatables. This is your oil dipstick. If you need to add oil to your engine, this is where you would add it. This is for your hydraulic system. The hydraulic oil level can be viewed by re removing this. There's a dipstick in here. You can check your fluid level here. And twist to close. There's a, an Oasis ITR overflow bottle here. Century fluid is what's uh, the name of the fluid inside. You can get that from Numar. Just above that, you have your transmission dipstick. Just turn, pull out, and check your fluid level and add if needed. Here at the center is our engine block heater cord. This needs to be plugged in so that when you turn your engine preheat or engine block heater on, it will come on at the silver leaf screen. This indicator will tell you if you need to replace your engine air filter. When the engine is running, the yellow diaphragm is supposed to be in the green range. If the yellow diaphragm goes up into the red range, you'll need to replace the filter that's in this canister because that's where the air comes in for your engine. This is your fuel filter for your engine. So when you're done accessing or servicing your engine compartment area, we just wanna close and you'll hear it latch here and our compartment's locked. Down below we have our hitch and our connection for our Voyager camera for the trailer. We have our Bargman connection for lighting and auxiliary air for tow brake if you have air needed in the tow vehicle for Air Force One. This is another blind spot detection device at the rear of your coach for the driver's side. Up at the top is your air intake for your engine. That has to be clear if you see any debris there, clean that off, keep that screen clean. And the same goes for your radiators here. 
in the rear engine compartment for your engine and transmission. That needs to be free and clear. This is your emergency exit door. The emergency exit door needs to be closed into the second latch and flush. This is your DEF fill. It fills the same tank, whether you're filling it from this side or the passenger side. That vent is for your dryer inside. In between the wheels is your HWH jack. We mentioned it on the other side. When you stow your jacks, just take a visual check before you leave the campground, make sure that it has completely retracted. This door is for sewer hose attachments and hose. Blind spot detection, marker light and docking light. So this is your water bay compartment. This compartment is a heated compartment if you turn on your ITR Oasis. The ITR Oasis burner has to be on for this compartment to stay warm in cold temperatures. Um, having the heating elements on inside the ITR Oasis is not going to be enough heat uh, to keep these uh, tanks from freezing. So this uh, warms your uh, three tanks, your fresh tank, gray tank, and bla black tanks. Uh, so you want to make sure your ITR Oasis is turned on in cold weather. The sensor or the temperature sensor for this compartment is located here. It's a small device uh, about the size of a dime. And that is what keeps this uh, area at about 40 degrees. Just beside that is a filter, a screen filter for the water pump. Uh, that's an important filter. If your water pump is turned on and you're not getting good water pressure or your tank isn't filling um, and, the, and uh, the pump just runs, you can rotate this screen off counterclockwise. You can take the screen out and clean it. When you're done, put it back. And tighten it in place. Now you notice the little antifreeze come out. Right now this coach is winterized. So this is the hose that's used when you winterize your coach. This goes in the potable antifreeze. These valves are reversed and the water pump is turned on and it draws in the antifreeze solution. That entire process is here to use your winterizing kit. These are the steps that you would go through, which include low point drains. Where are your low point drains? There's one here, small black handle that you'll need to open to drain all the water out of the fresh water tank in addition to opening these two low point drains to drain all the water out of the hot and cold water. Once you've drained those, you'll close them and then winterize. Again, that's part of the winterizing process here. Once you're done winterizing, you'll put this cap back on the end of the hose and just store that in this compartment. With your new coach, you'll get this filter, a brand new filter that goes in this canister. This canister is your whole house filter so that all the water that goes in your house that you use is filtered through this. So remove this filter before you winterize, otherwise the filter won't be any good. To connect to the water source, and fill your tank or have water in your coach. This hose is manually extended and it's connected to a water source of not more than 60 PSI. Once your hose is connected, you'll be able to make a selection for your fresh water fill. Do 
You know, if you wanted to fill your freshwater tank manually, you could do that here. Or if you just wanted water in the coach, you could switch to here. If you wanted the auto tank fill and auto city fill supply, you could turn it all the way up, but you'd have to activate the auto fill for those on the Silverleaf screen inside the coach or here in the panel right above it. This panel is your fresh black and gray tank indicators. You're at the home screen now. It gives you water, lights, genset, tilt, features, and dim. So if we go to our water screen, we can see we have our water pump here. We can turn that on and off here. Autofill can be engaged on and off here or top off. Lights, we can turn on our security lights on either side or we can turn our generator on. In addition to that, we can tilt the coach if it's on our air ride. <clears throat> if it's on our airbags, we can tilt the coach. Why do we want to tilt the coach? The tanks that you're going to drain, which are either the black or the gray tank, can be tilted this way so that all of the effluent, not just most of it, will be exited out. Going back to the home screen. But, hey, say the engine needs to be running while you're you do that. I thought I did, but anyway. To use the tilt function, the engine has to be running because the airbags are what tilts the coach. So you have to have your engine running. When you tilt the coach, and you would probably just leave it running uh, until you're done emptying the tanks. And then when you put your coach back into park or drive, uh, the, the level will go back to what it was before you put it in the tilt mode. So we can empty our tanks if we're level or if we're tilted with the engine running. The way you would empty your tanks is either through your SantaCon, which is a motor and grinding device, or manually without using the macerator. So we're going to explain how to do it through the SantaCon. That's the device that grinds up the effluent. <clears throat> this small hose needs to be connected to the sewer discharge. Once that's connected through the floor. The connection, uh, this needs to be removed or the small one, and then this needs to be inserted in the sewer discharge. When that's done, there's a small lever, a small handle, straight back here that connects into that hose, and we would want to pull that towards us. That allows the fluid that goes through the macerator to come down through this hose. Once we open that gate valve for the SantaCon, we are ready to empty either the gray or the black tank, preferably we empty the gray tank first, just for us for a minute. We want to do that to make sure the macerator and the hose are clear. Then we switch back to the black tank, empty the black tank completely, and then rinse it with what's left in the gray tank. So how do you do that? So now that we've opened our gate valve for the SantaCon, we need to open the gray valve for the gray tank. You'll see here it's labeled gray water holding tank. So straight down from that is the gate valve for the gray tank. So we would pull this open. Now we've opened the gray. We've opened the SantaCon. And all we need to do is turn the pump and the grinder for the SantaCon on here. We would turn the macerator on 
and allow a, uh, about 10 or 15 seconds of grade tank discharge. Then we turn the SantaCon off, close our gray tank valve, push it all the way in, we'll switch over to our black tank. Our black tank valve is here. So we open our gate valve towards us to open the black tank, and then we would turn our SantaCon on, drain until it's empty. We can see when the black tank is empty, and then we would go back and finish. We pull our gate valve open for our gray, turn our SantaCon back on until the gray tank is completely empty, and that rinses the hose. But there are two additional ways to rinse the tanks. We can rinse the gray tank and the black tank. Uh, the directions are right here, open gate valve and turn on RV SantaCon when in use. So we open this, connect a water supply here. Then we would turn on our, uh, open our gate valve for the gray tank, which is here, and then turn on our RV SantaCon. And water's going in here and rinsing the tank while the SantaCon is on and draining. Once we've rinsed the tank, we can take this hose off, but there's gonna be pressure. So if you don't wanna get sprayed, you can release that pressure here just by opening up the low point for the gray tank. And then take your hose off, put this back, and then close this. The same applies for the black tank. Once you've finished, you can bring your SantaCon hose back up and store it, but we're gonna talk about how to do it manually. So if you're not gonna use your RV SantaCon, which is the macerator, you, you can connect the larger hose here, just rotate this off, and then connect your large hose to it. The large hose goes through the same opening. We would open this gate valve, and we can either empty the, the black here, the black tank here, or the gray tank, or both. Uh, preferably you do your black tank first and then your gray tank that helps to rinse that hose. Once you're finished, put your cap back on here, remove your hose, store it in the door uh, back at the wheel well, and close your gate valve. This is your paper towel holder. This is your outside shower if you need to rinse any of uh, this compartment area or the hoses or um, your rubber gloves that you use, just remove the handle. Uh, left is warm, right is cold. Just turn it on towards you. When we're all finished and we're ready to close the compartment and travel, you'll need to store your hose. It has an electric motor retract. The retract switch is here. Just press it down, retract. Our next compartment back is our cord reel compartment. Inside the cord reel compartment, starting here, you have a 30 amp connection that if you have a cord, an extra cord of your own, you can plug that in and plug it into your trailer. Below that is your power monitor. Power monitor is gonna measure how much power you have coming out of your transfer switch. It's plugged into your transfer switch here. So it will display in this window both legs, leg one and two, or any faults. You'll notice that there are two red LED lights on here. If those are flashing, that is also a fault indicator. You can refer to your surge guard owner's manual for more information on the faults for either one. The small 
white door is for your cable connection. Cable connections need to be plugged in here and your over the air TV turned off in order to receive cable channels. This surge guard protector protects against high voltage spikes and low voltage. So if you have a high or low voltage issue, the transfer switch will automatically shut off and cut power off to your coach, which protects you. If you have the generator running, power will be coming through the gray cord and it, this switch transfers, because it's called a transfer switch, it transfers the power from the cord and then it takes the power from the generator to go into your inside of the coach. Just behind the transfer switch is a, an ABS cover. That cover is Velcroed in place and I'm gonna remove it to show you your 12 volt fuses and relays. So we've removed the ABS cover and we can see starting at the top right, our solenoid, which is our charge bridge solenoid. Just, be, just beside that one to the left is a black battery disconnect solenoid. And to the left of that are all of the fuses. The row of fuses at the top are replaceable fuses. The second row down has fuses that are resettable. So if the resettable portion in the center of the fuse pops out, just push that in to reset. The locations of the fuses are all numbered and those numbers correlate to the panel on the back side of the cover. So if you want to look at any device, you can see that F5 is for your entrance steps. So if for any reason your entrance steps weren't working, you could go to fuse F5, pull that fuse, check it, and replace it if necessary. So to retract our shore cord, we pull it out manually, but to retract it here at the top of the door, we can push and the motor, electric motor will recoil it for us. Once it's completely recoiled, the end just is set here and then we can close the door. So in our next compartment forward of our cord reel compartment, is our ITR Oasis. This is a hydronic system for heating all of your hot water and all of the air in your coach. It also heats the water bay compartment, so it's important to have this powered up with the uh, burner engaged uh, to keep that water compartment warm in cold weather. You'll notice here at the top, the power light is on this is a manual switch to have the power on so you can turn it on inside. You have to turn the functions of either the elements or the burner on from the silver leaf touch panel. But before you can do that, it has to be powered on here. So that switch, if it's not green, is not powered up and you're not going to have hot water. So make sure that's turned on. Make sure your power light is turned on. There are other indicator lights here for your AC heat, compressor, fuel pump, and combustion fan. When those items are running, there's a green light that goes beside it. If you see any of the ones at the bottom four illuminate red, that's a fault. So you can try to reset if that happens. If the fault stays red, then you would want to have your unit serviced Red lights and green lights also appear in the indicator box up here. This panel has fuses behind it. So if a red light appears other than a green light, which you should see green lights in this panel, pull the cover off this panel and check your fuses. In the front, there's a small window here. You can view the flame as it's burning. The blue line is the cold water inlet and the hot is the water that's hot going out. And these two lines are going to your engine for engine heat assist. In our next compartment back, we've got a, our slide tray that we operated from the other side. It operates the same 
but there is a water line here, cold water line that actually comes here and goes through the slide out and then upstairs. It has a shutoff valve here, so if we need to turn the cold water off for the supply in the kitchen, we can do that right here. This line from here to the outside is a heated water line and it's 12 volt operated. There is another shutoff valve here on the hot water line that goes all the way to the front of the coach. If we need to turn that off, we just rotate this valve closed. To turn it back on, we just open. Our next compartment forward is the tray that we looked at. The Easy Glide tray operates the same from this side, open and close. Our next compartment forward is our batteries and inverters. These are lithium batteries. The lithium batteries are controlled or turned on and off to supply power in the house by this Lithionics BMS or battery management system. That battery management system can be turned on and off in the front overhead. There is a blue LED circle indicator light. It's a push button. That same push button is on the back side. If you notice my finger is slightly blue, that button is also here. So you can turn it on and off here or in the overhead. When the BMS is turned on, these lithionics batteries are supplying power into your coach this way, and they're also supplying power to your inverters. The inverters take that power and send it into your kitchen to operate your refrigerator and your microwave. They also, these inverters also take the 120 volt supply power from the shore cord and they energize or recharge the batteries. For that to happen, you have to have your charger turned on and or your inverter turned on to power up your kitchen. In the event that you have a fault with the inverter, you'll be able to see that here. You'll have a fault light that comes on. To clear that fault, just press clear fault reset. If the inverter is enabled, which that's the button here, you'll have the LED light that says inverter enabled. And whenever either inverter is receiving shore power because we are plugged into shore power, you're going to see the AC in here flashing and it's saying charging right now. Inside the compartment at the top, we have our solar charger controller and our Servo GX. Moving forward, we have our docking light, marker light, and fuel door. Remove the fuel cap to fill with diesel. This fills the same tank as the other side. And in our forward compartment, we have our fuses for the interior cockpit. Those fuses are labeled just beside the fuse, there's a name for each appliance or device that it operates. If a fuse is pulled or blown, you'll see a red LED light that comes on. So in that case, there's a missing fuse there. We would wanna replace that fuse. Whenever you take a fuse out and replace it, always make sure to use the same size. These are the spare fuses that come with your coach and then replace that fuse with the same size. The fuses that are down here are all chassis related or supplied by the chassis manufacturer. These fuses are labeled on the back side as opposed to our labels have the name right beside the fuse. The Spartan fuses are all labeled here with the name in the center and the location right beside it. So the jacks 
fuse is F21. So we just go to F21 if our jacks weren't working. Pull the fuse out with the fuse pulling tool here. Check the fuse. If it needs to be replaced, get the right size here and a spare, with the spare fuses and replace it. When you're finished, then you would reinstall the panel. On the side of the compartment is your windshield uh, wash handle. Just in front of that, you have your living room junction box for your floor heat. In the front of that, you have your connections from your chassis batteries. And we looked at this earlier. This is your extender retract for the generator slide. So in our driver's cockpit area, our first control on the left-hand side is our HWH leveling pad, touch controller. Okay, so the first control pad that you see here on the left side of the driver's console is your HWH leveling control. And to power this leveling control up, you just reach over and turn the ignition on or turn it to accessories and you'll see you get additional uh, lights that come on here that indicate we're slightly off level. And to level the coach, um, you can do it manually by pressing these buttons for extend and retract, or you can just hit the auto level button. Now, before you put your coach uh, into auto level or um, you do it manually, you're going to want to walk around the coach and just make sure that there's nothing underneath where the jack uh, uh, pads are going to be extending towards the ground. And you also want to check the reveals on your slide out. Make sure that your slide out reveals are about an eighth inch. Or excuse me, make sure that your slide out reveals are three eighths of an inch. And then you'll be able to go into auto level after you've run your slide rooms out. So leveling should only take place after you've checked your reveals and made sure that you can run your slide rooms out after the slide rooms are out. Then you'd want to go into the leveling process. So to do that, you'll turn the key on, hit auto level, and what you're hearing is the air going out of the bags as the coach is going into the leveling process. It takes a minute or two uh, to go through the complete leveling cycle. And once each jack is down, you'll see a red light that comes on to tell you that that jack in that corner is down. So you can see the coach is slightly moving as the jacks are going down. If the area that you're on has too much of a slope, then the excess slope light would come on. And then you'd have to move your coach to a more level position. But we're good here because the excess slope light is not on. If at any time during this process, you want the jacks to um, store and go back up, you would just hit auto store. But now you can see all of our jacks are down and our yellow lights are off, the showing, up, showing us that we're in a level position. So now we can turn off the ignition. And what you were hearing there was a, a warning signal that the ignition was on. Uh, while it was in the leveling process because the air wasn't in the airbags anymore. So now we're level and we'll do the exact reverse process for auto store that we did when we ran our slides out. So to go into auto store and bring the jacks up, 
we turn the key on, let the coach air up, run the slide rooms in, and then after the slides were in, then we would go into auto store. So we'll show you that. Turn the key on. After the coach is aired up, then you would go into auto store. As each jack retracts in the corner of your coach, when it's fully retracted, the light will go out. So before you travel, you want to make sure all your red lights are out. All right, so your last jack is up. The jack warning sound has gone away. And once you have full air in your airbags, you'll be able to travel. So uh, right now um, it's showing that we have auto stored. Again, if you at any time wanted to, you could extend or retract these manually, uh, but it's just about as easy to use the auto level and then auto store button to level. In front of our HWH leveling control, we have our Allison shift control. Uh, the shift control is going to put your coach in drive or reverse or neutral. And obviously we want to have it in neutral when we set our parking brake. So if we turn the ignition on in the coach, uh, this will light up and this will say the gear that we're in. So this, this little window in the front here will always tell you uh, which gear, whether it's reverse, first, second, or third, fourth gear, whatever gears here it will display. You can also refer to your owner's manual for more information on the modes and, and oil level checks and temp uh, will also be displayed here. If you use your mode button, just, and we'll go through uh, these settings in just a little bit when we uh, start the coach or put it in gear and when we demonstrate the parking brake. But going forward in front of that, we have the tag dump, uh, auto and then disable and manual. Uh, what this uh, rocker switch does is it releases the air in the tag axle so in case you wanted to turn a sharp corner in reverse, um, then the air uh, would be out of the tag axle and you could make a sharper uh, corner going in reverse, for instance. In addition to manually dumping the tag axle, it will automatically dump if you leave it in the auto mode. Just to the right of the tag for dump, you have your engine brake. Your engine brake is an assist feature for your braking so that when you release your accelerator pedal, if this is engaged, you'll be able to adjust the amount of braking that your exhaust is giving through your engine. So if you're uh, in the mountains and you're going down steep uh, inclines, you would typically turn this on and set this uh, to low, medium, or high, and that will help you save your brakes uh, because it's using the engine exhaust to help you uh, slow down. If you don't want the engine brake on and you're just driving at slow speeds and there's no inclines, then you might want to choose to leave that off. Moving up here, you see your parking brake. Your parking brake is pull to apply or push to release. So whenever I'm parked and my shifter is in neutral, I need to pull this towards me to set my parking brake. 
when I'm ready to drive again, push this forward and then put it in drive or reverse, whichever direction I'm going to be going. Just to the right of that, I have my mirror adjust. The mirrors uh, for the left and right side in the front. If I want to adjust the left mirror, turn the toggle switch to the left and then make my adjustments left, right, up or down. And then over to the passenger side mirror, I can do the same adjustments when I'm finished. I want to leave that in the center. So in case it, anyone touches those again, uh, no adjustments are made after I set the mirrors where I want. Just below the parking brake is a charging pad for your phone. Just to the right of the mirror adjustment is a switch that we can turn on or off for our heated mirror that will melt frost or remove fog on your mirror if you leave that on for a few minutes. Obviously, if there's no uh, fog or any frost, we can leave that off. So if we want the uh, automatic dimmer switch to be on for our headlights, um, that's down here. This is automatic lights on. So if we leave that on and this is off, this automatically will turn the headlights on when it's dark enough. In addition to that, if we want the dimmer, the headlights to be on high or low beam, we can turn these on auto high beams and they'll automatically switch to high beam so we don't have to do it manually here. If we want to cancel it, we push it down, resume is automatic high beams. This one is the dome light for above us. If we just want to uh, dim the lights here in the cockpit and on the switches, we can go dimmer. You can see the lights are going a little dimmer or brighter. Just below that set of controls is your automatic traction control override. If I turn this on, that will cause the traction control light to flash here on the glass dash. As long as the ATC is turned on for the automatic traction control, that light or that LED will flash. If I turn it off, then it will disappear. This is your front window for the driver. And this is my air horn. If I turn the air horn on, then the horn will be uh, air. If I turn it back off, then it will just be the street horn. There's your louver for your air uh, heating or cooling here. And this is your Curtis brake control. Um, you can set this uh, to different settings and uh, that will adjust the amount of brake that your trailer is that you're towing. You can see here, I'm, I can change the colors, um, but as they go over, uh, I'm increasing the braking, and as I go back, I'm decreasing the braking on the trailer. On the left side of the column here, I have the turn signal control, and whenever I have the left turn signal on, it shows the left camera. Right turn signal is going to show my right camera. The cruise control is also on the left hand or right hand signal just by uh, turning it on and off here to set it. I can turn it on and then I set it here. And then for bright or dim lights manually, uh, the indicators here, I can uh, dim or make my headlights bright. There is an additional hazard switch right here. If I pull this out, you can see my hazard lights come on. To cancel the hazard lights, just pull down or push forward on the lever and that cancels them out. On the floor, near the floor, there's another pedal here, a small pedal. 
If I press that pedal, then I can release my wheel and then make any adjustments for up and down uh, to tilt the wheel while I'm driving or to get out of the seat. It also telescopes the wheel in, out. And then once you release the pedal, it stays in that position. On the steering wheel itself, there's three clusters. These three clusters uh, give you fingertip control for the wiper wash, wiper on and intermittent, high and low. If we're, if we're done with the wipers, we just press the off button or we can make telephone calls here through our radio core if we have our phone on connected to Bluetooth or USB. If we're going to use the intermittent function, however long you take after you press and turn it on, to press it again is how long the intermittent will happen. When I'm done with the wipers, I obviously just turn them off. In the center of the console, you can see that I can uh, select uh, my radio, my source here on the screen for Bluetooth, HDMI, any of my menu selections for my radio. I can just do it uh, with my fingertips here. I don't have to go down here and touch it on the radio panel itself. Um, I can mute the volume here uh, for the speakers, or I can turn the volume up or down, or I can uh, go forward or back on my uh, selection of music. The headlight flash is here. If I need to flash my headlights, I can flash my marker lights here. You can see they flash. The cluster on the right is my home screen menu. Um, I can go back and I can look at uh, any selection I make here. I can then scroll with the arrows up or down. And once I scroll to whichever one I want to make an adjustment to, I click on the OK and I can see if there are any messages. Uh, I can scroll up or down in those settings. When I want to move on to the next setting, I can just click on the home, home button again, and then I can go up or down. Let's say, for instance, I wanted to see what my tire pressure was, which is your TPMS. Then that's going to display here. If I press OK, then I can see what the inside and outside tires are. Um, pressures on all all of my tires. So this is your menu. You can scroll up and down. Once you get into that particular uh, selection, just press the OK, and then you can make your adjustments uh, to that uh, setting. On the left side of the glass dash, you've got your fuel indicator, your engine temp indicator, your oil pressure indicator, your lane mitigation warning, which is used with the mobile eye that's mounted on the windshield. You've got your air pressure indicators for your front and rear of the coach. You wanna make sure that your coach is aired up before you drive or before you run your slide rooms in and out. And this is your DEF indicator which is showing full at the time. This is the time of day on the far right. Uh, this is your RPM. Uh, this gives you more data on your trip information, distance to empty. This is our um, uh, miles per hour. We can change the miles per hour setting to kilometers. Um, here, if we go into our settings uh, on our glass dash. When we make a selection to our gear shift here on the Allison, uh, we're going to be able to see if we're in reverse, neutral, or drive. We're in neutral now. It's showing neutral. Our collision mitigation system will come on and display once we're in gear and in motion. And of course, this is our 
uh, park indicator here. If our parking brake is set, we're always going to see the P. If it's released, the P won't be showing. We're in park now. One thing that we see on the right side of the cluster here is the effort minus or plus, you can see it moving, of the power steering. The comfort steer is what it's called. I can change those settings to easier or more firm uh, for the steering wheel motion, uh, whichever I like. And then the one just below that is for my pedals. If I want to bring my pedals towards me, push the um, lever towards me. If I want to make the pedals further away, then I push that away from me and the pedals will go further away from my seat. So moving over here to the radio and the cameras, you can see uh, they're on right now. This is how it would look if they were off. You'll just see the splash screen. To turn it on, just press and release. <clears throat> Takes a second for it to come on. So on the left side here are your radio uh, core selections. And you can see those with the menu. On the right side here is your camera. So on the menu, you can see here there's navigation and camera. So if I ever want to just make selections for my camera, I can just hit the camera button here. And you can see I can select any one of these views, front, rear, or any one of the sides. In addition to the one in the rear, there's a further expanded view or closer up view, but the one in the center is the one that you would typically leave it on for driving. So just beside the trailer cam view, you've got your 360 degree cameras on both sides or um, all, all, the, all four cameras. Uh, if you had a camera, if you had your trailer hooked up, then you could have these two selections, which we don't have right now. And then, of course, these are your other two selections. And the bottom one is the 360 degree view all the way around your coach with all the cameras uh, showing a complete picture of what's around surrounding your coach. Going back to the menu. You can select any one of these in the menu, Sirius, Bluetooth, HDMI, Auxiliary, our setup, Mobile Eye, which is for our lane mitigation. Our navigation is also here. So if you wanted a shortcut to your navigation, you don't have to go through the menu. You can just hit it here. Whenever you select navigation, you'll have to click on accept. And once you do that, then you'll be able to go in and choose a route, a multi-point route. If I choose a new route, I'll be able to enter the address uh, that I want to go to or a zip code and the street, and then that will display my trip. Bluetooth gives me the option of connecting my phone or iPod or other devices to my radio core for music, for instance. I can press my phone and then I can pair a device uh, that I'd like to go with the radio for music or for making telephone calls uh, with this button up here. There is obviously the camera control here, but there's also that camera control here. So the shortcut to get to the cameras is always right here. But if you're in the menu and you want to go to the camera control, then you just do it here and you're at the same place. 
um, the mobile eye um, gives you lane change warnings um, when you're traveling uh, you have to be in gear for this to work uh, the mobile eye is mounted on the front of the coach and we'll show you that in another uh, section of this video and of course you have your setup screen and this is where you would go uh, to set your um, your any of your settings up auto connects uh, auto volumes the house mode will need to be turned on if you want to hear what's playing on the radio in the entertainment entertainment center outside so just remember that whatever you're playing on the radio here if you want to hear that music outside or on the outside speakers you have to turn it on house mode if you have house mode off you won't hear anything outside Okay, looking at the selection of controls just below the radio and camera, you've got your house to chassis battery boost. Uh, this is a button that you might need to use if either set of your batteries is low. Let's say, for instance, our chassis batteries were low and we couldn't start our engine. We could press this button down and hold it for 60 seconds that will boost the house batteries into the chassis batteries and help you start your engine. Same with chassis to house. You can boost the house batteries with the chassis by holding it the opposite way. You can hear the fans in the front here are on, but we can switch to off or low. That's the heat coming down below here um, for the cab. So if you have your ITR Oasis turned on, you can turn this front fan on high or low, and that will give you heat in the cockpit area of the coach. In addition to that heat, there's overhead fans that you could use to circulate the air around the windshield area. The overhead fans switch is on or off here but you also can select high medium or low fan speeds for the overhead fans those are used a lot of times in conjunction with uh, anytime you need to defrost the coach if you're having this knob selecting over for defrost you'll often turn your overhead fans on to help that defrost process There are dock, this is a docking light switch here on and off, courtesy light switch on and off, and our generator on off button. If we press and hold the generator towards the gen start side, it preheats and starts. Once it starts, it, the flashing light goes out, meaning that your engine is, your generator engine is running. When we're done with the generator and we want to turn it off, we just press and hold that down and that turns it off. To unlock the entrance door, we just or, uh, lock and unlock is here. We have our visor and shade controls for the cockpit area here. This is our visor. You can hear it going up and down. On our driver window, we have another visor here for the front windshield. This is our shade for the front windshield and our visor on the passenger side. For the shade or the visor on the front windshield, if the key is turned on, they'll only come down halfway. And if they're down all the way, you'll only be able to move them up. That's a safety feature that Newmar builds in so that you can't lower the shade more than halfway while you're driving.
So these are your HVAC controls just for the cockpit area. In order for these to turn on initially, you have to set it to at least a number one or two or any one of the fan settings. Then you can turn your air conditioning on with the snowflake button, recirculation or non-recirculation button with the arrows that rotate here, and then of course your warm and cool selections along with which direction you want that air to be um, pointed to. This is defrost all the way to the right and any one of the mix selectors um, on the other ones. Inside your coach overhead above the driver's seat, you have your Wi-Fi router from Wi-Fi Ranger. Up at the top, you have your satellite prep and your additional 120 volt outlet. If you connect your satellite here, you can put your receiver in this location. You have your HWH master reset switch. So what that does is if any of your HWH slides, steps, um, has a glitch, maybe doesn't work, um, you would hold that switch down for five seconds and that would reset the HWH system. And that should take care of the issue. If not, then you would have to check with your servicing dealer. Down here uh, on the left, you have your television antenna for over the air uh, channels. You can see it's turned on here. Uh, and when it scanned, it received or found two channels and put those channels in its memory. If you need to rescan for more channels, just hit the search button and it scans. Whenever you travel to a new location, you'll have to do the scan again to find the over the air stations in that area. You can make small adjustments once you've selected a channel on your television. You can rotate the antenna inside its dome uh, with either one of these switches. If you're watching over the air TV, this is what you want to have turned on. But if you want to switch over and watch cable, you need to turn this one off because if it's on, the cable channels won't be able to be viewed. So just remember this on for over the air or off to watch cable. Your Girard controls for your patio awnings and door awnings are here. You can switch to channels here. Zero is all three of the awnings. You can select one at a time. And you can turn the LED lights on for that. Out, in, and stop. Or you can lock the awning here. If you lock it, you won't be able to use the remote control. So we move over to this panel. You can see that we've put a, a small note here to be sure that both driver's and passenger seats are in the forward position before we activate these two slide outs. These are the slide outs on the driver and passenger side. What we want to make sure is that the seats are not only forward, but the armrests are flipped forward as well and that we are on air ride before we operate the slides either in or out. To do that, once we're aired up, just press and hold the switch in the direction you want to move. In is retract, out is extend for both slide outs. The exterior LEDs underneath the slide outs is a strip of LED lights. We can turn those on here. The exterior entrance step override switch is here. If we want the steps to remain out instead of coming in when we close the entrance door, we turn that on to override the steps and they always stay out. The Wi-Fi router that you see here has to be powered up. So we power up the router here. Once it's powered up, you'll see some LED lights come on that are green to show that it's powered up. Down is off. This blue LED light is for your batteries, your house battery switch. It controls the BMS. We talked a little bit about that already, but what it does is it turns the battery management system on 
and supplies power in the coach. If this is blinking, then there could be a fault. You'll need to refer to the lithionics information in your packet. If it's off, it may have turned off because the batteries reached a lower level and we didn't want the batteries to die. They'll shut off at 10% state of charge. If that happens, you can just press the button again. The BMS will allow the batteries to power up your coach, but since you're on your last 10% charge, you want to make sure to turn on your charger, which is in your inverter settings, and plug the coach in or turn on your generator. The optional equipment down here are your window awnings we demonstrated earlier, driver security lights, privacy drape here in the cockpit area, and the door privacy drape along with the passenger drape. This port is for the RVC network uh, test or programming, you won't need to access that. You have additional cabinet space here. And behind these doors, we have your awning controls for your Girard awnings. There are three Girard awnings, the door awning and your two patio awnings. When you see the red LED light, that means that those awnings are powered up and you'll notice on the sides of each one of these uh, boxes that control each awning individually, there is a set of buttons. The buttons on the outside are extend and retract, and the button on the inside is stop. So in the event that your remote may not work or your one in the overhead, you can always come inside and extend or retract your Gerard awnings right here for all three. They do need to be plugged into the Recept because your awning motors are 120 volt motors. These circuits, the 120 volt circuits, are on GFCI protected outlets. So if these are not powered up, you would want to check your GFCI resets, making sure that you don't have a GFCI breaker that's tripped because that would cause your awnings not to open or uh, operate at all. Um, in addition to that, if you're dry camping and you want to have power to these awnings, you'll need to make sure that your inverter is turned on. As you enter the coach here at the entrance door, we put some switches in this area to make it handy for you to turn them on. Turn on turning on the battery disconnect will enable you to operate your baggage doors and your lighting. So this switch needs to be engaged and the red light comes on to tell you that the house batteries are now connected. So you can operate uh, those uh, 12 volt connections and lights in your coach. This is your baggage door lock and unlock. And just below that, there's a small black switch. That switch overrides the steps operation. So in the event that the steps are partially out or in, this uh, switch will override the steps. Just press and hold that and the steps will operate. So moving over here to the passenger seat area, you have a buddy screen. The buddy screen mirrors everything that you can see on the infotainment center at the driver's seat. So to scroll through those, you could just click on the source and you'll be able to accept and go uh, set different routes uh, for navigation. Uh, you'll also be able to see the camera and or go into the radio settings. Just behind that screen, we have our patio light switch, our visor for the shade here, step cover, step covers here where I'm standing, that opens if you press up a step comes out so that you can stand here without going down the stairs. To retract it, just press down. It drops out and stows away. 
The ceiling light switch is here to turn all the ceiling lights on when you come in the coach. The map light is here. Just below that, you have your phone charger. And below that, there is a 12 volt auxiliary charger here. And un underneath that is a fire extinguisher. You can unclip it if you need to. There is a window here with a crank out and screen. Moving over to the seat, we have the touch panel control and the HVAC temperature. The lighting controls give you a choice for all of the lights listed here, bathroom, bedroom, accent lights, all lights on and off here, or you can dim your lights. If you go to the home screen, you'll be able to see there's a menu here. If you don't understand how to turn those items on for lighting or shades, you can actually go into the information screen, which is the I. So if you press the I, now you can learn about any one of those. Let's say, for instance, the shades. You want to understand how they work or how they operate. We have the operating instructions here on two separate pages. Going back to the home screen, just touch the home, and you're back to the home screen. Just below that, we have a 120-volt outlet with USB chargers. Both of the seats here, the driver and passenger seat, have almost identical controls. The only difference is the leg rest on the driver's seat will not open when the ignition is on. The parking brake has to be set. But the controls across here are the same on both seats. This is for the seat heat. We don't have the ignition on, otherwise you could see there's three settings. We have the lumbar, or excuse me, we have the tilt for the seat back. We have the lumbar support. And then we have the foot rest here. We have the entire seat moving forward and reverse. And we have the entire seat tilting here. On the opposite side of the seat, there's a lever that you can release to turn the entire seat in either direction. If you want to spin the seat all the way around, I recommend that you move your buddy screen out of the way and move the seat forward slightly, making sure the seat back will clear when you turn the seat. So move the seat forward a little bit, and then we can release the mechanism, which we'll show you in just a second, and the seat will turn into the living room area for extra seating. This is the release. You just pull that up and that releases the lock. Now when we turn it back around, it'll... The armrests are adjustable. You can pull a hidden lever up and then they lock back into place. If you want to move it back down, just lift, and it locks back into place for both sides on both chairs. You can just lift to put them out of the way. To turn the seat back into the drive position, you just turn it around and it will lock back into place. The driver's seat is the same with the same controls. Just remember that if you're going to be in either seat while you're driving, you want to make sure and fasten your safety belt, which is right here, located uh, at your shoulder level. You have your theater seating here. The theater seating has electric motor controls right at your fingertips. It has a charging point for USB charging, and it has a uh, illuminated cup holder. So to tilt your seat back with your footrest going up, just press the first icon which shows the seat in that reclined position. And you can tilt it quite a ways back. 
get comfortable when you're ready to stow it back just push the one beside it and it closes and you can turn out the light in the middle of these two seats is a sliding drawer with a lot of extra storage space both seats operate the same way just to the left side here we have our touch panel control it operates the same as that one it dims it has the same home screen and the same options for operation we, if we want when we're sitting here if we want to raise the TV up we would go to the systems control and touch the TV lift it illuminates red that means it's lifting and if you uh, turn around we can see the TV is going up we can stop it at any point just by touching the same button so with our television turned on um, we'll we'll use our remote control to go to the home screen press the home button in the center that gets to this screen and then this icon here is our selection for menu so just uh, toggle over to the left here and go to settings so you'd have to scroll down to settings then press the center button here and now scroll over to all settings and what we're going to do is we're going to scan for channels if we scroll down here to broadcasting then we select that press the center button again and we go through auto program to find the channels so press auto program and we want to press the start to auto program we have to have our over the air um, wine guard uh, turned on and once that's on then we're going to scan for air channels yes and it'll go through the scan and it'll show us how many channels it found Thirty nine channels. So we can either scan again or we can go to our different settings or just close. You'll have to scan the same way uh, with the wine guard antenna off if you want to watch the cable channels. So if you want to scan for cable, turn the over the air antenna off and then scan again for your cable channels if you have part cable available and want to watch cable. Now we should be able to connect with a channel here. Yes. To go back to the home screen and scan for cable, scroll left, back to settings, to the right, all settings, broadcasting auto program and this time we want to we're plugged into cable we've turned our over the air um, wine guard off and now we can scan for the cable channels obviously since we are not plugged into cable we won't pick up any but that's how you would scan for the cable and you'll have to scan for channels for each TV location, whether it's out here or in the bedroom. And we can put it down just by putting TV lift down. If you're going to be traveling, we recommend that you put the TV in the down position. Just above the theater seating, we have additional storage space here. And another lighting touch panel control here. At our TV lift area here, we have a sofa that folds out into a bed. We have cabinet space above. 
The cabinet in the center is the audio visual cabinet. The audio visual cabinet has satellite connections uh, and pre, uh, pre ran HDMI source for your satellite and Blu ray DVD, along with 120 volt outlets in the top. Those HDMI cords go down here to the main TV. It has the Bose sound bar above. 120 volt outlets on both sides of the sofa. We can lift the TV to control here, the same as if we were across. If we wanna fold this couch into a bed, Remove the cushions. The backs are Velcroed on. Take those and move them out of your way. Right here at the back, there's a strap. You reach down and grab that, pull up on it. That comes open and the legs come down. And then come back here and rotate the back down gives you your sleeping surface once you're done with it you want to make it back into a bed just reverse that or once you want to make it back into a sofa just reverse that flip the back back up grab this strap pull up and Lower this back down into place. Just strap back down out of your way. Grab your back cushions. And Velcro them back in place. So moving over into the kitchen area, we've got our Whirlpool microwave. Above it, we have more storage. The Whirlpool microwave has a double or dual latch. Numar installs an additional latch down here uh, to help so that it doesn't open during transit, but it is a little more firm to open and close. So keep that in mind. This microwave is plugged into this cabinet in the back. This cabinet contains some important information on the inside of the door and cabinet including paint colors, country club information, gross vehicle weight, serial numbers here. We have an additional storage drawer here. We have additional storage here in this cabinet. And above the beverage cooler, we have three more cabinets here for storage here. And we have our dual zone beverage cooler and dual lock. There's a lock here that you would want to lock the doors for transit. You can adjust the temperature separately for either side. When you want to lock for transit, you want to close your doors and just put your key here and turn to lock these before you travel. This is the key that you use to lock your beverage cooler doors. We have our cooktop here, and on top we have the covers. On the back of each cover, we have a cutting board that you can use. So we can use both as cutting boards if we need to. With the, the uh, true induction uh, cooktop uh, requires a magnetic pan. We can turn it on and if we don't have a magnetic pan, it won't stay on. That's a kind of a built-in safety feature. So uh, as long as you have a pan that's uh, made for induction, which is a magnetic material, you'll be able to use the induction cooktop. Lift it up if you want to take it outside. You can unplug it here and use it outside when you're done. Just bring it back, set it in place. When you're done using it, be sure and let it cool down before you put your covers back on. 
The rounded corners always go on the outside edges. The straight ones go in the middle. We have the same type of covers here over the sink. These actually stow under the sink. On the left hand side, there's small felt slots that these slide into. We also have a storage drawer and a trash receptacle drawer here. The sink has a telescoping wand. If you reach in the back, you can pull it down with your fingers and then spray and then retract. We have more storage here below the sink. Another touch panel here to control our lighting in the kitchen area. Above the sink, we have additional 120 volt outlets that are GFCI protected. Below our cooktop, we have our large kitchen drawer for our silverware. When you get your coach initially, you're going to have all of your remote controls and other uh, accessories, paint, touch up paint, extra Starlink Wi Fi router, and tools that you'll need uh, for uh, using your coach. Touch up paint is here. Uh, remotes, this is your awning remote for your Gerard awnings. So just go through there. You have tools. This is for adjusting the um, motors uh, extension and retraction on the Girard awnings. This is an important tool that we should probably look at right away. This tool is used to pull down the drop ceiling so you can get to your filters. This tool is used to reach up in between the louvers and pull down. So you can access the filters for your HVAC system. The air conditioner, when it runs in cooling or heat pump, which are on the roof, all of the air in this room goes through these filters into the air conditioner and then exits out here as hot or cold air. But these filters need to be pulled out and cleaned. So you can reach up here, grab a hold of the louvers and pull down. And then you'll remove the filter. Uh, you can blow it off or just wash it with warm soapy water. Air dry, rinse it and air dry, and then put it back and reinsert. There is one, two, three, four, five filters you need to clean here in the kitchen or living room and kitchen area, and then also in the bedroom. When you're finished, these magnets hold this panel up, you just push up and the magnets will hold it there. This is your Fisher Paykel dishwasher. When the power is out, the door is locked. So when you unplug your coach and or turn off your inverter, there's no power here, so the door is locked. Once you plug your coach in, turn your inverter on, and have 120 volt power in the kitchen through the sub panel, just turn this on. Now the door is unlocked and you'll be able to open it and put your dishes in or take them out and uh, set your wash settings here. Close your door. If you have uh, children around and you wanna lock the controls, you can press and hold this for a few seconds and lock the panel. To unlock, same thing, just hold it down for a few seconds and it unlocks the control panel. And to turn the power off, just hold it, same switch, now the door is locked. Okay, so moving into the dining area, you have a table that actually extends, so you can have more guests at your table. To extend your table, there are two leafs in the, uh, underneath the bed in the bedroom. To extend it, just grab a hold and pull. And you can add one leaf or two. We have one here. The, the leaf has uh, channels that line up with the other steel channels on this side. So you want to make sure to have the steel on this side. Line those up.
and then close the table. Now that you've extended the table a little bit, you've got some extra room for a, another chair. These chairs, there's two of these underneath the bed in the bedroom. When you're done with dinner or lunch, you can remove the chair and the leaf, pull it out and store it back in the closet or under the bed and push the table closed. So if you're going to ex extend the table so both leaves go in, you'll need a little more support on the end. So Numar builds another leg in the table that's uh, magnetically attached to the underside of the table. So it's right here. So if you release that leg, it will fold down. And then you can add your two leaves and you'll have room for two chairs at the end. To store it, just lift it back up and the magnet will hold it in place. And now you can close the table. Moving over here to our refrigerator pantry area, we've got a dual door pantry with drawers. The drawers are locked. They're pushed to open, so you can't open them by pulling. You have to push and then they open. And they're all the same. If you would like to have more or less distance between your shelves or your drawers, if you pull this all the way out, there's a small plastic tab here. If you hold that tab down, it's, it's naturally in this position. If you hold that down on both sides, all right, you have to hold one up and one down. So I'm holding this one down and the one on my left hand up. You can pull the drawer all the way out you can just take the whole bracket, just loosen it and lift it up. It's pretty easy to do. Just grab a hold of it. There are small plastic inserts on both ends. Once we've got our shelf adjusted to the position we like, we need to line the runners up with the rails here and here. Your three-door refrigerator is a Whirlpool stainless steel. Numar adds a special door lock here so that the doors are locked during transit. To unlock the doors, when you get your, your coach, you have to push that over to the right. Now you can open the doors to the refrigerator. Inside, you'll find a brand new water filter here. This water filter is inserted in the receptacle here and then close the door. So that is your new water filter. There is an air filter that gets installed at the fresh flow area. There is an ice cube tray on the left hand side in the freezer. The Ice maker is straight back, just above the tray. There's a bale arm on it. And make sure the bale arm is down when you want to make ice and up when you don't want to have ice. The refrigerator controls are fairly simple. The more snowflakes you have on one side or the other for freezer temp, you have colder freezer temps if you want warmer freezer temps, just do one snowflake or two. Same with the refrigerator side. One snowflake is warmer and as you go up they're cooler. To turn the refrigerator off, just press and hold the temp buttons on both ends and your refrigerator is off. Turn it back on, same way. Press and hold a few seconds. You can reset the air filter um, warning. You can put it into fast cool. You can turn the light on the backlighting here on and off. And you can reset the water filter cycle so you know when it needs to be replaced again. 
to dispense water, just put your cup here and press and hold for however long it takes to fill, then release. Just beside the refrigerator, we have another pantry or closet. It, it could be used for either. You can adjust the shelves up or down, and there's a bar at the top to hang clothes. So you could move these down um, for shoes or whatever and then you could hang clothes here, or you can use it as a pantry for your kitchen. Located in the mid area of your coach is the Silverleaf touch panel, and this screen will allow you to control the functions in your coach. So we have those functions labeled on the outside perimeter, and then when you choose one of the outside selections, it appears in the center of the screen. So starting at the top left is the dimmer. So you can turn uh, the screen a little bit dimmer if it's later in the evening um, or brighter, whichever you choose. Uh, at the very top, it gives you the date and the temperature. And there's a gear icon. We'll get to that a little bit later. But at the home screen, the home screen is going to display in the center uh, what your tank levels are, what your battery is, uh, whether the uh, batteries are bridged together and char helping each other charge. It uh, also shows our gen set, leg one and two, and our shore power. So as you can see, we're not plugged into shore power. Um, our house batteries are at 85% state of charge. Our chassis battery is at 13.2 and our tanks are all empty. And that's pretty much the way, whenever we make a selection, it's just gonna show in the AC power selection, we don't have power on leg one or two, our inverters are off because we're not plugged in and they're not working. So scrolling on down to DC power, we've got uh, DC means direct current. Direct current comes from our batteries. Our batteries are showing that they're 85% charged and we have 13.1 volts. These batteries are lithium. Lithium batteries always stay at about 13 volts. Uh, unlike what you were seeing uh, before, um, our chassis batteries are a uh, AGM type battery, so they show a voltage where the house batteries will show a percentage of overall state of charge. Moving on to our generator, we've got our manual start, manual stop. So if we need to turn our generator on, we can do that here. And it also shows uh, whether those are locked out. It shows activity flags uh, and you know anything that's on will be circled in blue. For your generator. We can go to our AGS settings. We can turn our AGS on. It's disabled. So one of the things you want to be sure to do if you turn your AGS on is enable it so that the generator can come on when the batteries fall below 30% state of charge. That's something key to remember. In your water, if you select your water uh, button, you're gonna show all of the items that relate to your fresh tank or your other tanks, water pump on and off switch. We can turn our water pump on and off from here or the autofill. If we move to our climate, that relates to all the temperature settings, whether our um, heat or cool is turned on or off, we have to make those selections here um, it shows all zones uh, here, meaning living room, bath, and bed. So we can select cool, auto, or heat. Auto is just a, an automatic setting where you choose a temperature you want and it will select between the cooling and the heat, whether that's the heat pump or the air conditioning. So if you select heat, you're going to have to turn the Oasis on. The Oasis is your hydronic heater for your water heat and your air heat. 
So you need to turn your burner on here or off here. And you can also select the electric elements, which give you some uh, hot water and some heat, but not uh, a lot for the heat. It does, it does heat all your water. But if you're selecting the elements and you're gonna take a long hot shower or you need a lot of heat because it's a really cold day, you wanna make sure your burner is turned on. We can select individual zones or we can select the entire coach by pressing all when we're in the climate mode. So refer to your owner's manual for more information, but when any one of those cooling or heating functions come on, you're going to see that icon is highlighted with an LED, like we have the heat on now, so it's highlighted in blue. That's our ITR Oasis burner. It's going right now. If we were running our air conditioner, you'd see the snowflake highlighted. So to, when we turn on our block heater here, it turns on the outlet for the block heater, which is plugged in manually. So we wanna make sure our block heater is plugged in and turned on if we want preheat for our engine. Our battery's state uh, shows here that it's uh, currently at 13.2 volts and it gives you more detailed information on uh, what temperature and how what the temperature is in the bay. So this is a much more detailed information, how many amp hours remain. If we select the coach mode, it helps us uh, more quickly go and set or preset settings that you would normally have to maybe select manually. So if we're camping, um, and we're outdoor unplugged, outdoor plugged in, you can then choose, so let's say you're outdoors and you're plugged in, <clears throat> it shows you that uh, that selection will enable your chargers and will en en enable your um, hydronic heat, which is your Oasis. So just remember that if you're going to make a selection here, it's going to display what's going to be turned on over here. And then you have to activate that function. So whichever one I choose, I need to activate in order to turn those items on. Moving over to my floor heat, that's just the heat that comes off of the floor. We can turn those on here, or we can do it like this and turn them on to number 10. These are not temperature settings, they're just numbers the higher the number, the longer the pattern that they're on. To turn them off, we just go here or just down. So you're not really setting a temperature, you're just setting uh, the lower settings or just a few bars, it's gonna be a lower heat setting. And the more bars you put, the warmer the floor is gonna be in the rear of the coach, front or mid. For the ventilation fans, those are your fantastic a roof vent fans that pulls air out of the coach, kitchen, master bath, or schoolroom. We can turn them on or off. So now we can go to high, medium, or low for the kitchen uh, or the master bath. Whichever we select, we can then choose that to be on or off. There is one additional uh, function if the fan, if you turn it on, but it doesn't come on, there may be moisture on the rain sensor. You can override that by pressing the rain sensor override. So anytime that you want to override uh, the fan and make it come on in case the rain sensor uh, won't allow it to come on, you can hit the rain sensor override and the fan will come on and stay on. The door locks, you can uh, toggle them on and off for the entry door or the cargo doors. The shades and TV lift can be controlled here. TV up, down, bed, bath, or living room, kitchen. You can select any one of those and then you can go in and uh, turn those on. 
shades lift. And of course we can control all of our lightings in the bedroom, half bath, living room. We can turn them all on and off here. Or we can dim them however much we want to be bright or dim. And then the final icon is the gear icon. And the gear icon gives you selections for setting the clock, auto gen start settings, lithium battery statuses, climate options, and more. Floor heat scheduling, autofill configurations, network diagnostics, shows errors or things that may not have worked. And our next page is monitor diagnostics. If there was a monitor issue, we can see that here. We can customize our monitor if we like and miscellaneous settings. On the last page is we can view the clock, uh, test the touch screen. And that covers, uh, in general, the operation of these functions, but there is more detailed information in your owner's manual when we recommend that you go through and read uh, those in more detail. In the baggage area downstairs, you have your InterVac accessories. Your InterVac accessories can be plugged in here, or if you just want to sweep your floor and have it go into the InterVac system, Downstairs, you can sweep here, lift this up and sweep, and the dirt will go into the dust bag there. To, to attach your accessories that are in this bag, it's pretty simple. You have a long hose with accessories like this. Just lift this door and insert your hose here. There is a warning label. The warning label that's on the inside of the door here is exactly the same as the one that's on the hose. It just says make sure the dust bag is in the sweeper downstairs. So once we make sure that we've got our dust bag in, we insert the hose here. And to turn it on, this is just a turn on switch here. There's a battery that connects to the downstairs back. Turn it off here. And we can attach our accessories and use the vacuum inside or the dust uh, to clean off anything we like. If you need to change the battery, you don't know what size, just uh, scan the QR code. You can go to the website for more information on that. If you're going to store this back in the bag with the accessories, you just want to make sure that the accessories don't bump into that switch. So when you put this back inside, just make sure it's looped around to the outside of the bag and then put your accessories on towards the inside of the bag so it doesn't get turned on when it gets bumped. Just below our 10 inch silver leaf screen control, we have our HVAC control for our zone that's in the center of the coach. And beside that, we have our half bath door. To unlock the door or just unlatch, just push in on the top, grab the bottom and pull towards you. And the door folds in. On the back wall, on the large two doors, inside those doors are your 12 volt fuses and your 120 volt breakers. On the right side is the gray cabinet with the steel door. That's your 120 volt breaker box. The main breaker has to be turned on on the very top or none of the other breakers will receive power. The breakers are all pointed towards the center to be on, and if a breaker trips, they will be about halfway to the middle or uh, sometimes flip more towards the outside uh, is all the way off. You can, yeah. So you can turn a breaker all the way off if you like, or you can turn it back on. And each breaker has a name beside it. Um, and so you can see what appliance is being turned off or on, or which one may have tripped a breaker. On the left-hand side, you have breakers at the top in those black boxes that are fed power by inverter one and inverter two. Those are called sub-panels. They only receive power when you turn your inverter on. They receive 
their power from the inverter through the batteries. So as long as you have battery power, you can turn your inverter on and you can operate those appliances that are uh, listed right below uh, those breakers. Those breakers, they trip the same way and you can turn them off the same way. Just below those, you have your floor heat number one and number two. If your floor heat breaker happens to trip, that's where you would reset them. They are GFCI, so they're protected. On the left-hand side at the bottom, you have fuses. Those fuses are labeled with numbers. The numbers are printed on a label on the door. So if an appliance or any item isn't working and it's a 12 volt appliance or uh, any 12 volt operated uh, motor that is named on that list and you'll be able to look at the number and go to that fuse pull the fuse see if the uh, see if the fuse is blown um, for the two fuses at the bottom you don't need to replace those those you can reset by pressing the center uh, switch to reset the spare fuses if you do need to replace are in the back it's labeled spare fuses and just remember if you replace a fuse always use the same size when you replace it just below the cabinet with all your electronics is your crank open window it is screened so you can have fresh air in the bathroom if you'd like On the left hand side, you've got your vanity mirror and extra storage space. You can open the vanity mirror and you have uh, shelves behind there. On the right hand side, you have a 120 volt outlet, which is GFCI protected. So at the underside of the vanity cabinet, you've got a uh, light here. When you turn on your mirror lights, that'll come on and you've got to drop down the 100 volt, 120 volt outlet. And this is a tri plug, so you can plug things in all three sides. To flush the toilet here, it's a Dometic toilet, and we have a Dometic control here. The Dometic control can fill extra water into the bowl with the top blue button. For the bottom one, that's one used to flush. You can always flush unless the LED light turns red. This LED light is just below the green one. If you see a red light here, that means your black tank is full and the toilet will not flush. Before it turns red, you'll see it might turn amber because you're at 75% full. So if you see the amber light come on, your black tank is getting full. Um, and once it's red, you have to empty the black tank before you can flush. Just below that, you've got your drawer and more cabinet space down here. The louvers at the bottom. Uh, there's the fan for heat. You have your sink. Hot and cold. Hot to the left. Cold to the right. And more storage underneath the sink here. The touch panel here in the bathroom can be used to turn on the overhead vent, which is your fantastic fan. Just go to the home screen and, and then go to fans. Uh, here we can select the stool room or master bath. This is the stool room. And now we can select uh, high, medium, or low. Let's go for medium. You can hear it's opening and the fan will come on. If you need to um, override the rain sensor because it has a rain sensor in it, you can touch the rain override sensor and even if there's moisture on it, it will still open up and run. Just remember if that's on and it starts to rain, uh, you may get some rain inside. So if you have a heavy rain, I don't recommend it, but if it's just a little moisture um, from morning dew or a slight mist rain, uh, then override is fine. If you wanna turn that off, just press the override again. And to close it, we just wanna turn it off. So just turn it off and it will close and the fan will shut off. So as you enter your bedroom, you'll see a sliding door. It opens and closes here with this latch. Right now it's in the travel position and it's locked. To unlock it, just push down. That unlocks it, now you can close it. And the other panel will move with it. When it closes, you'll hear it latch. 
to unlock it and store it back. Just unlock here and open it up again. and it will lock into place on this side. Just above the door, you've got your CO2 detector. The smoke detector is in the front. This is the CO2 detector, but it tests the same way and it has the same tones. So if you wanna make sure that it's going to work, press in the center and hold. You'll hear an audible beep and a series of tones that tells you the battery's charged up. You'll also see an LED light that flashes. If you don't hear the tones or see the LED light, the battery's probably low or dead. To replace the battery, grab a hold of the sides, squeeze and pull down. You'll be able to see the nine volt battery here, pull the nine volt battery down and replace it. When you're finished, just push it up until it clips into place and then retest. Make sure you hear the audible sounds and see the LED light. Moving back on this wall, you'll see this is the HVAC temperature sensor for the rear of the coach. We've got a nightstand here. The nightstand can be opened and there's a 120 volt plug in the back side. So you can plug in there. And at the top, even once we've plugged in, there is a small gap at the top. So even if we close this door, we'll still be able to put a cord in and come up here. On the back side, you've got more storage and there is an access for a cord or hose if you have a CPAP machine and you wanna plug that in. Up here, you can run the hose down through here on both sides, either side is fine. More storage, another 120 volt outlet there. You've got a window that has a slider with lock. If you'd like to open this window, it does have a screen. Just lift up and pull the window open to have fresh air and close and lock. Moving over to the other end, we have the same storage space in the overhead. And on the bottom side, as you're laying in bed, you look up, we have another lighting control panel so you can control all your systems here laying in bed, as well as your speakers in the rear bedroom. The speakers are mounted on the ceiling on both sides. You can turn one speaker on or both speakers just by flipping those switches on, but you'll have to have the radio turned on, obviously. There's more storage underneath the bed. So to lift the bed up, reach under and lift. You see this is where Numar stores the chairs and the table leaves, uh, but you can still add more uh, items under here because there's more space available. To put the bed down, just push and it'll go down. So on the back wall of your bedroom here, we have our slide out control for the bedside in and out. You have to hold the button in. If you release it, it'll stop. So in this case, the slide's already out. So I wanna bring it in, just press, and you can hear the slide out coming in. If I release, it stops to go back out, press, and continue to hold it, and it will stop automatically. Once it stops, then release. Make sure that everything's clear before you run it in and out. To extend and retract the window awning outside, this is the switch to do that. Extend is at the top and retract is at the bottom. So if I extend, you can hear it going out and you can see it in the window as it extends. And then we retract to store it for travel. The lighting control here in the coach works just like all of the other ones. You can go to the home page and go to any one of the selections as the other switches on the wall. If we go to shades, we can see here we've got forward day shade. Now our day shade's moving. Uh, if we want to move all the shades, bedroom day shades, we just press that one and all of them go at the same time. So we can do one individual or all of them. 
And we have our Samsung TV. And below that, we have extra drawer space here and much larger drawers here. Oh, inside every Newmar coach is the warranty accessory bag and operator's instruction manuals. When you open this up, you're gonna find all of the information on your coach for plumbing, heating, exteriors, electrical, all of your appliance, all of that paperwork is in here with all of the owner's manuals for each individual appliance. And uh, all the coach paperwork is included, so be sure and go through your black case, fill out your warranty registration cards, or go online and fill them out there for those appliances. So just above our drawers here, we have an exit window. In case you have an emergency and you need to get out of the coach, all the instructions are here. Basically, all you're doing is releasing your, your latches here on both sides, and then you're gonna push the window open and exit out of the coach. If you're not going to, make sure these latches are closed on both sides. For travel. Just above the emergency window, you have your audiovisual cabinet for your television. The cords are labeled source for your um, Blu-ray DVD player, that's for your HDMI. You have your satellite connection here and two 120 volt outlets so that uh, you can put your DVD player or your satellite receiver in this compartment, plug them in and um, plug those into uh, your cords and that is for this TV in the bedroom. Just beside that we've got our Silverleaf screen. This screen mirrors everything that you saw on the 10 inch screen. It's just a little bit smaller. So as you enter the um, rear bathroom, you have a pocket door here to, that you can close to unlock. It's the same as the one that you use. Push down the plastic and close the door. It will automatically lock when it's closed. To unlock it, just push down again and open. You want to have it in the opened and locked position for travel. So now it's locked in place, you can't move it. So as you first enter the rear bathroom, you've got these two double doors for your dryer and your washer. The dryer's at the top. The settings are easy, just timer and heat. Open and closed. For the washer, the same, you've got your selections for different types of wash and your touch panel here. There is a notice that when you're operating this, you're using quite a bit of water. So if you open your gray tank valve outside in the water bay compartment, that's gonna ensure that the water that's exiting out of here during the wash cycle is not filling up the gray tank completely. Uh, if that happens, uh, then you're going to have water coming into the shower. So to prevent that, just remember, open the gray tank gate valve so that it drains out the sewer. Right beside the washer and dryer, you have an access panel for those controls. You can turn the hot and cold water off that supplies the washing machine and the plugs in the back. Uh, you can unplug if you need to remove that appliance. So just behind the toilet, you have an emergency exit door in the bathroom. To get out of the coach, you're rather high up off of the ground, so there's a ladder that's built in inside the door behind this panel. So we need to open the door, so we unlock it. Unlock here. Now we can open the door. And there's a small tab here we wanna grab a hold of, and the magnets release off of the panel. Now we can see the ladder. So all we have to do is step a little bit closer, release the Velcro. Now all we have to do then is tip the ladder down and let it fall and it will telescope out and we can get out of the coach. I'll go back outside and show you how to store it. So to put the ladder back in place, all we have to do is lift 
and telescope it back. Lift it up and at the base, we now lift up so it goes in, close, and then put our Velcro back on and our panel. Make sure the tab is towards the inside and close the door. We want to make sure that that exit door is locked. Just turn the deadbolt, that locks the deadbolt, and then that locks the handle. It does have a crank out window here if you need fresh air in the bathroom. It has a screen, open and close. Just crank it the opposite direction. You'll notice a small plastic bulb here. These are like the other two in the front and center of the coach. It's your bulb sensor for the HVAC system for heating and cooling. It's the thermistor sensor for your HVAC system in the rear of the coach. This is your Dometic toilet and Dometic flush module is here. To add water to the bowl, we press the upper blue button and to flush, we press the lower one. The green light LED tells you that it's illuminated and it's on, ready to go. If you see an amber light below that, that means your black tank is at 75% full. If it's, if it's red, that means your black tank is full and you won't be able to flush. So when you see the amber light, think about emptying your black tank because when the red one comes on, you won't be able to flush. You have a wardrobe closet in the back with additional storage below. And the louvers are for your heating. In the cabinets, you have your medicine cabinet with the mirror on the right hand side. You have the mirror, but behind this mirror is your lighting control circuits. And lighting control circuits are self-contained. Just below that, you've got your dual sinks on and off, hot and cold on both sides. You have extra storage space below here, along with drawers here. And here. When you see a red line versus a blue, the red is obviously the hot line. The blue one's the cold. I'm standing on a floor panel that is an engine access cover. So to remove this cover, I have to remove this wood panel first. It's just clipped on. I can remove that. After I remove that panel, I would take these plugs out, the black plugs, and remove the screw and lift this panel out to, end, to get to the engine and do service work. There's a lot more storage space on this side, starting with your cabinets and shelves. There's a special list of all your appliances in the coach on the inside wall of this cabinet. Every model and serial number is listed there for all of your appliances if you need to refer to that uh, for warranty or replacement. There's a special panel that you can lift up here to access plumbing here. The drawers below for more storage. And the louvers are for your heating. So we have our shower here. If you jump in the shower, you can turn it to hot or cold, but you might have to wait for hot water unless you use the special shower miser that we built in. Numar installs it to help you save water. Let's take a look at that. Inside, there's directions on the back of here which explain it but I'll just go over with you really quick. The aquamizer is here. We need to turn it on on our touch panel. Let's show you how to do that. So if we go to the home screen we can go to systems and we can see our aquamizer right here. If we turn the aquamizer light on and we go back to the shower we can see that the light is on. So once that light is on it's blue once it's uh, warm, warm water is going through that area, it will turn red. 
How does that happen? You'll, what you'll need to do is this is called a diverter. Right now, the diverter was in the middle, so that wasn't where it should be. It should be on the left uh, when it's in storage or not being used. But to make the water recirculate, you can see the recirculation arrows here. You turn this to the right. Now the hot water is going to be going back into the fresh tank until it's warm enough, then this changes to a red color. Once you see the red color, then you switch this back over to the left, and then you're ready to adjust the shower either to the overhead or the handheld right here. And we can set our temperature right here to cold or hot. We have our overhead dispensers for shampoo, conditioner, and body wash. Below that, we have our seat that folds down. When we're done using it, just fold it back up. When you close your shower door, it has two magnets that keeps the door closed. If you're gonna travel though, we prefer you turn this so that the door is locked, just in case the door does come open, it can't go all the way open into the aisle. With the lock, it can't come open during travel.